morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to my session today. Um, this is Steve Kim from Fault Pillars, and Fault Pillars is a global research company based in Korea. And we are now expanding our businesses to thesis and research-driven validator to only handful of chains. And Wallace is one of them, and we are one of the top validators on Wallace, just in case you guys don't know. And over the past two years, uh, we have conducted more than 200 researches on uh, various layer one, layer two, apps, Oracle, bridges, storage, you guys name it. And we have found out that SUI has the most interesting and fascinating protocol that we have ever researched on. And that's why I'm here to talk about SUI. You know, my topic is about uh, how SUI and Mission Labs are creating SUI as an unfocable network stack. If I remember correctly, um, yesterday during the opening remark by Adani, uh, he addressed how SUI is unfocable. And today, I'm going to address how and why it is unfocable. So before delving into the details, uh, let me reintroduce myself in SUI's term. This is my SUI domain, uh, SUI, uh, Steve Kim, that's SUI. So if you guys have any, any gift and present for me, feel free to send anything to that domain. You know, uh, tokens and NFTs are welcome. And I published uh, more than 10 articles on SUI over the past two years and three plus articles on Wallace. And I make 15 plus daily transactions on SUI. Uh, my favorite app is Double Up, and I lost more than 10K SUI on Double Up thanks to Healthy. And I am, uh, I'm a heavy user of SUI Land, Cetus, Bluefin, you guys name it. And I personally own more than 20 plus SUI NFTs, namely Prime Machine. This is one of my favorite Prime Machine. Kumo, Double Up Citizen, and uh, Lutlad, you guys name it. So this indicates that I'm not just a typical researcher who just writes things about SWE based on the document that I read. But I am a heavy user of SWE, so my articles are based on the document, but at the same time, my experiences as a user. So my article is going to be re really sincere and authentic. So let's, let's go into the details. Uh, so how SWE is creating an unforkable network stack. So I uh, made like three reasons, main reason as, as a researcher, while exploring SWE's architecture and infrastructure, wallets and all those network stack that SWE is building. So I just named three. So number one, SWE's tag is not only new, but it is continuously evolving. So like, it is really hard for a competitor and other third party to copy and paste Swiss tech because Swiss tech is new and it takes a lot of time to comprehend those new technology. But once they comp completed comprehending the, the technology, Swiss introduced him another technology to comprehend. So that makes other competitors too hard to keep up with the technological advancement that Swiss is making. So for example, if you look at the consensus, over the past two years, uh, SWE has changed a lot and improved a lot. They started off with Nawa and Bullshark. And as a researcher, it was one of the most fascinating protocols that I have ever researched during 2022 because they separated Mimple protocol from consensus. And thanks to those separations, they achieved very impressive scalability of 110K to 130K TPS and low latency of two seconds. And they outperformed all the previous PF, B, uh, BFTs, like you know, Tendermint, Hostuff, and DMVFT even. And that was impressive, but Mr. Labs and Sweet folks were not satisfied with the performance. So they just combined, recombined the main pool into consensus to reduce the latency, but without sacrificing the scalability. So Mysticity achieved 200K TPS and lower latency of 0.5 second. And that made SWE one of the fastest blockchain in the world. And obviously, it outperformed a bull shark in many aspects. And now they're exploring a new and improved version of Mysticity, which is Mysticity V2. And I think as a researcher, one of the most fascinating facts of Mysticity version 2 is that they are improving the transactions that touches the shared object on SWE network. So, after Mysticity version 2, you guys will experience much faster transaction, much faster smart contract execution. And speaking of the execution, let's look at the execution environment of SWE. Uh, they are, SWE now currently has a single machine uh, execution environment, uh, which is really fast. And they can be improved by adding more core to the CPU, 
but there is a certain limit and threshold to scalability. So they are introducing multiple worker execution machine environment, which was introduced in the name of Pile of Fish. And Pile of Fish is all about adding multiple worker machine into the three execution environment. And now it evolved into Remora. Uh, it is really important to note here that you know, even the Pile of Fish and Remora are not the final version of the SUI execution environment. SUI and Mr. Labs are continuously and actively researching what would be the better way uh, to implement it, and the, it within the SUI network as a multiple worker environment. So I'm not sure um, when and, and what they will implement into the SUI mainnet, but it is really important to, to note that uh, these are the, the SUI and MISTEN folks are continuously researching what will be the better and efficient way to execute the um, transaction and, and adding multiple worker machine as the workload getting really increased. Yeah. So number two is not only a blockchain, but they are building the entire stack. So if you look at this graph, uh, I made it. Uh, so th consensus, they have Mysticity version 2. Execution, they have Powerfish Remora or something else in the future. Storage, they have a Wallace and Sill. Uh, as you guys know, Wallace is more of an most decentralized and most efficient decentralized storage protocol with programmability. And that actually changed the entire paradigm of decentralized storage protocol sector. And you know, with SEAL, SEAL is more of a data access control and data privacy. So when it comes to institutional player, I think SEAL is going to play a really important role here. And networking, we have Scion. Scion is going to be about protecting the data packet uh, between the validator. And whenever they, whenever they have network, uh, Scion is going to protect data packet between the validator and networking. And user experiences, you ha we have ZK login, pass keys, and kelp. You know, kelp is about you know recovering the pass key, recovering the, uh, the private key, right? And ZK login is the interesting fact of ZK login is that ZK login was the one that got me into the Swing network. Okay, ZK login is giving you the access of the key, and without sacrificing the self custody, it enables you to onboard Swing network really easily. Developer experiences, we have RPC 2.0, Swim Move Prover, BotGuard, Move Registry SDK. That makes developer experience much easier. So it is you know, almost impossible uh, to copy and paste all things that Mr. and Swim are building. And it is physically impossible. And it takes a lot of brain power, a lot of resources, a lot of capital, a lot of human resources to maintain those entire stack of web. And SUI is not just building a smart contract layer right now. Their smart contract is just one aspect, one sector that they're innovating. They're continuously innovating every sector of web, so they're reinventing the web, not in reinventing the blockchain. So my last uh, reason here is insurmountable first mover advantage. SUI is the real first mover. Um, you know, thanks to Sam Blackshire, he is the uh, creator uh, and founder of Moose. So SWE is just the symbol of the uh, pioneering the moving system. But you know, if you look at the detail number here, um, numbers cannot lie. No other competitor in the moving ecosystem right now. Um, SWE has number one in TVL, number one in DAX volume, and number one in market cap. So what's the detail? TVL is about liquidity, how much liquidity are actually in the, within the uh, network. And DAX volume is about how much of that liquidity is actually being utilized by the user. And market cap is about how market perceives the network. And SWE, in every sector, they are number one. So they not only have really you know, a lot of liquidity, but they have a lot of users utilizing it. And in, even the market perceives SWE as the front runner of the move ecosystem. And now, they are becoming the front runner of non EVM and EVM as well. And you cannot fork loyalty. If you look at, uh, if you read the, one of the developer reports published by um, Electric Capital, uh, there is an in interesting fact about SWE ecosystem. Uh, more than half of SWE's active monthly developers are dedicated single chain developers. So this means. A lot of SWE developers are not just spraying and praying uh, into multiple chain, but they're just uh, they're paying their loyalty to uh, single chain, which is SWE. 
So they are not multi-deploying into the multiple chain. They are not actually um, spraying and praying their resources. They are actually, they chose SWE and focused on SWE and invested a lot of resources on SWE. And this is something that other people and other competitors cannot work. And you know, I'm not just talking about developer community, but also when it comes to the retail investor and as a, like a researcher, content creator, SWE actually rewarded has she has rewarded every member of the ecosystem uh, by introducing you know new uh, protocol and new unicorn you know Wallace, Deepbook, SwiNS, and a lot of ecosystem projects as well. Uh, Navi, we have Navi and SwiLand. A lot of ecosystem projects rewarded uh, their community and loyal users, and that created loyalty about Sui ecosystem. And as a researcher, I got rewarded by a lot of retweet, a lot of likes, a lot of shares. And Sui ecosystem, Sui community are really enthusiastic about the about the content that I'm I'm writing, and that actually kept motivating me to write more things about Sui, and that actually created virtual cycle about the loyalty. And that makes me to think about what would be the better content, what would be the better article, what would, what would be the better research report for SWE and SWE ecosystem Wallace. And those loyalty is something that you guys cannot fork. And in my opinion, you know, I have researched um, blockchain more than six years, and I have encountered so many blockchain that claim themselves as a third generation blockchain. But in my honest opinion, uh, I really think that SWE is the real third, third generational um, distributed technology. Because in order for us to call something as a generational shift, our perception has to change. You know, Bitcoin was peer-to-peer -peer cash. It was, it was about decentralizing the cash. And ETH, it was all about decentralizing the compute and execution. And you know, other, you know, after, after ETH, other blockchains came out, they actually claimed themselves as a faster version of Ethereum, and they claimed themselves as a real third generation, but it is not because they are just faster version of ETH. They're not shifting the paradigm. And SWE, on the other hand, they are shifting the paradigm right now by introducing the whole network stack. So they are not about decentralizing the cache, decentralizing the execution. They are decentralizing every web stack. And in that sense, I can confidently say that SWE is a real third generation uh, distributed technology. And I think uh, SWE, as its name indicates, SWE is a wave. And SWE is creating a wave right now. And all you got to do is to ride on that wave. And if you guys are really interested in SWE and learning more about SWE Network, I'm more than happy to answer any questions after the session. And if you guys are shy or introverted person, please uh, go get one of the reports that I wrote on the registration desk. It is 80 pages. It's very comprehensive. And if you have any question after reading the report, feel free to DM me on Twitter or on you know, Telegram or anything. I'm more than happy to answer any question. And you know, thank you for coming to the, my session today. And you know, looking forward to chat more. Thank you. <laughs>